our agenda for today, uh, we will learn about reservoir fluids classification and its importance uh, into reservoir engineering applications. And uh, finally, we will uh, get a brief notes about reservoir fluid sample. For reservoir fluid classification, we learn it from our books that we have about four types for oil reservoirs and also we have four types for gas reservoir. But actually in the industry, we have about only five uh, types of reservoir fluids. We have the black oil reservoir, black oil fluid that uh, engages the ordinary black oil and the low shrinkage crude oil. Also, we have the volatile oil fluid, uh, reservoir fluid that includes the near critical crude oil and the volatile crude oil. For gas reservoirs, we have uh, three types. We have dry gas reservoirs, we have wet gas reservoirs, and gas condensate. The gas condensate reservoirs, including the retrograde gas uh, condensate reservoirs and near critical gas condensate. And we will uh, learn how to differentiate between uh, these types of uh, reservoir fluids. We have three methods to identify our reservoir fluid. First, uh, if we have the composition of our reservoir fluid, we can, uh, we can construct the phase diagram uh, or the BT diagram for this fluid and locate the reservoir pressure and temperature, uh, and temperature on the phase plot. And upon the location of reservoir pressure and temperature, we can know the reservoir fluid type. The second method is to monitor our production performance and the production data can tell us uh, more information uh, and the more actual sense for our reservoir fluid. The third method uh, is when we have the composition, we can locate this composition on McCain ternary diagram and and so we and so we can uh, know our reservoir fluid type. For our uh, for oil reservoirs, as we mentioned, we have about four uh, types of uh, oil reservoirs fluids. We have the ordinary, we have the low shrinkage, uh, near critical, and uh, volatile crude oil. But actually, we have about we have only two uh, in the industry. Uh, we deal with only two uh, types of oil uh, reservoir, the black oil and the volatile oil. For uh, low shrinkage oil uh, reservoir, for production performance, we have initial, initial GOR about less 200 uh, standard cubic feet per standard barrel, oil barrel, and the EBI will be less than 35. For the phase diagram here, we have this the this uh, this line representing the reservoir conditions temperature and pressure and uh, and uh, the uh, point g is representing the separator uh, conditions uh, so we have the temperature uh, is less than the critical point so we have an oil reservoir and also the pressure and temperature point is far away from the critical point, so it is likely to be a uh, black oil reservoir. Uh, for uh, for the for the journey of the oil from the reservoir through the well and to the surface, it loses a lot. Uh, it loses some gas. For the low shrinkage oil, uh, it has uh, it has low gas to be lost uh, to the system. So. Uh, low shrinkage occurs for uh, this type of reservoir flow. The ordinary black oil has more uh, more gas than the low shrinkage uh, gas uh, low shrinkage oil uh, reservoir. So uh, uh, its GR uh, between 200 and 700 cube, standard cubic feet per standard oil barrel, and the EBI ranges from about 15 to 40. Uh, the location of reservoir pressure and temperature is, is nearer than the location for the low shrinkage uh, black oil uh, reservoir. For the volatile crude oil, uh, it's a GOR, it's initial GOR from about 2000 to uh, 3200, 
standard cable feed and the EBI between 45 and 55. Uh, we can notice that the reservoir pressure and the temperature is, uh, becomes near to the critical point. And the volatile crude oil has uh, more gas, uh, more gas, more dissolved gas that be lost on the surface uh, or separated by uh, the production facilities. For the near critical uh, crude oil, uh, we can uh, we can see that uh, the reservoir pressure and temperature becomes very very near to the critical point uh, represented by the point C on the phase diagram. So uh, we can we can see that when when the uh, pressure uh, being about uh, 50. 10 to 50 psi below the bubble point, uh, its volume shrinkage from uh, 100% to about 55%. So it loses a lot of volume by, uh, by pressure uh, decline. Also, uh, the production performance, the GOR, the initial GOR is higher than, uh, is higher than uh, 3,000 to about 3,000 and a half or 3,200 standard cable feed or standard oil pile. And for its composition, uh, the C7 plus person uh, uh, is, is ranging from about 12.5 to about 20 mole person. For ethan to uh, hexan, uh, the composition will contain about 35 percent uh, mole person and the remainder will be methane. The volatility characteristic trend uh, for volatile oil uh, reservoir, we can note that the EPI is increasing by the time. The reason for that is that the, at the initial, the, the initial time, the gas, the gas produced is from the oil, uh, the oil phase into the reservoir. But uh, by more production from our reservoir, uh, the most oil is coming from uh, the associated condensate with the separated gas. So the EBOI uh, will increase as a result of increasing the condensate ratio for the oil production. To summary, uh, oil reservoirs we have this uh, we have this shrinkage uh, shrinkage uh, plot for the various oil reservoir fluids. We have the low shrinkage representing by A, uh, the, the curve of A and B representing the ordinary black oil and C for high shrinkage and D for near critical. So the near critical uh, oil reservoir has uh, uh, the greatest sh uh, shrinkage uh, between all oil reservoirs. And uh, for also for phase plot, we can notice that the black oil is far from the critical point and the, oil, the volatile oil is near to the critical point. To differentiate between uh, the black and the volatile oil into the industry or and the actually, uh, the difference between black oil and volatile oil uh, it depends on the RV. RV is representing uh, the amount of oil associated with the separated gas. So the separated gas by the production facilities, it, uh, if it has about from one to 10 standard oil barrel per million standard cubic feet, so it is a black oil reservoir. If the RV uh, for the separated gas is ranging from about 10 to three, uh, 300 standard, cubic, uh, standard barrel per million standard cubic feet, so we have volatile oil. So the, 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 the big constraint for volatility or the difference between the black and the volatile oil reservoir is for uh, the RV. The RV is the amount of oil associated with the gas separated. For gas reservoir, uh, we know that we have four uh, types for gas reservoir, dry and wet. 
and the condensate, uh, the condensate reservoir representing retrograde gas condensate and the near gas condensate. For dry gas, the dry gas reservoir, uh, the composition will still in the gaseous state into the reservoir conditions, the reservoir pressure and temperature, and also as a surface, uh, it, it, it will still into the gaseous state. So no oil, no oil, no liquid uh, is formed from the dry gas reservoir. The GOR for dry gas reservoir is more than uh, 100,000 standard cubic feet per uh, standard oil pan. So it is very, very low GOR. For wet gas, the difference between wet gas and the dry gas is that the wet gas remains into the gaseous uh, state into the reservoir uh, pressure and temperature and also when the reservoir uh, pressure declines it also will remain into the gaseous state but when this gas is is, is coming to the surface some oil are precipitating from the gaseous state and form it into uh, or form it as a liquid into the separator conditions so this is the difference between dry gas and wet gas reservoir. The GOR for wet gas reservoir is ranging for, from uh, 60 to 100,000 standard cubic feet per standard oil pan. And also the EBI for the separated oil above 60 degrees. For, uh, for uh, gas condensate reservoir, the temperature the temperature uh, is located between the critical point and the cre condensed term. The cre condensed term uh, is the point uh, as the last oil uh, droplet uh, will become uh, as into the gas uh, gaseous state. So the retrograde gas condensate uh, uh, in, 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 the, in the reservoir life uh, at the initially, initially uh, with production, uh, some of this gas is condensated, uh, is con condensed as oil, uh, oil phase into the reservoir uh, until it reaches to uh, the maximum point or the maximum point of uh, liquid drop out. Then, uh, because because the, the attraction forces between the heavy component molecules will become more than the attraction between the heavy molecules and the light, uh, the light uh, molecules. So this uh, heavy molecules is condensed as oil phase into the reservoir. But when the more depletion into the reservoir pressure occurs, this heavy, uh, this heavy components follow the uh, follow the normal vaporization process uh, when the pressure declines. So this the, the liquid drop out is returning back and decline the gor for uh, retrograde gas condensate is ranging from about uh, 8000 to 70000 standard cubic feet to bear standard oil bar the ibi uh, above about 50 degrees for near critical gas condensate uh, the reservoir temperature is very, very near to the critical temperature for this composition. And also, uh, the temperature is located between the critical point and the cre condenser. A rapid liquid dropout occurs uh, with the pressure decline, uh, as we see on the liquid dropout chart here. To differentiate between gas condensate and the volatile oil uh, reservoir for composition, the volatile oil contains more than 12.5 uh, mole percent of, of C7 plus, and the gas condensate is condensate less than that number. Also, the gas condensate GOR uh, is greater than uh, 3,000 and half standard cubic feet per standard parent. So, we used uh, the first and the second method for differentiating between uh, oil and gas reservoirs. 
using the composition uh, and locating the reservoir pressure and temperature on the phase group and also uh, uh, recognizing the, uh, the production performance or the initial production from the reservoir. The third method is, using, is, is, uh, is to use the McCain ternary diagram. The ternary diagram of McCain, we, can look, we, we have three points of three corners for the ternary diagram. The first, cor uh, the first corner is for uh, methane and uh, nitrogen. The second corner for C7 plus and third corner for methane and two hexane and uh, CO2. So by locating, by locating and intersecting these points uh, of composition, uh, the intersecting point, we have uh, four segments for uh, gas condensate, volatile, ordinary and the low shrinkage and dry gas systems. Uh, uh, when the intersecting point is located into uh, these segments, we can identify the reservoir fluid time. Also, again, for production performance, the black oil has its, uh, the GOR is increasing uh, when the reservoir pressures decline below the bubble point, then uh, the GOR declines again due to depletion. Also, the GBR, uh, the EBI, the EBI declines gently with time uh, of production for volatile oil. The GOR is increasing uh, when the pressure uh, declined below the bubble point and the significant uh, differentiating between the black oil and the volatile is for EBI. The EBI for volatile oil reservoirs is increasing with time. For gas reservoirs and retrograde gas, uh, retrograde gas reservoirs, the GOR increase uh, by time and also the EPR. For wet gas, the GOR is constant because the wet gas is still uh, and will still into gaseous state into the reservoir conditions. And also the EPI is constant. For dry gas, no liquid uh, drop out okay. We have three properties also to differentiate as a summary between the oil and the gas reservoir that the initial GOR and the EBO and C7 plus uh, more person into the composition of reservoir, uh, uh, of reservoir composition. Uh, the black oil uh, and the volatile retrograde and the wet gas, dry gas, uh, and the GOR by using the GOR. Uh, excluding any well uh, issues like gas cooling uh, uh, or uh, any any well problems, we can identify our reservoir fluid. We have some examples. We have a well that producing uh, initially with an EPI about 54, and the initial GOR about uh, 20 23,000. Standard cubic feet. So initially, as the GOR uh, is above uh, three three thousand and half standard cubic feet, so we can suggest that it is a condensate gas condensate reservoir. Uh, second example for a field uh, that has a GOR two thousand two thousand, so it is an oil reservoir, and also the GOR is about. Uh, 2000, uh, it is very high uh, to be uh, black oil, so I suggest to be volatile oil. Uh, also, the EBI uh, increased from was increasing from 50, uh, 51 to 63, so it is a significant uh, property for uh, volatility. So, we have a volatile oil reservoir. We can notice also in the composition below that the C7 plus uh, 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 mole person is about 14.91. So it is higher than 12.5, uh, 12.5 person. So uh, it can a volatile uh, oil reservoir. The third example, <laughs> the yield or the RV, the RV representing the oil associated with the separated gas. The initial yield uh, is about 125. 
So it is very high and it, uh, it can be gas condensate uh, reservoir. Uh, this example for uh, the GOR versus the production, uh, production time, we have that the, the average GOR is about uh, 300, so it is black oil reservoir. We have also the GOR, GOR versus the production time. We have the initial GOR about uh, 30,000. So it can, uh, it is the, uh, on the border between the wet gas uh, reservoir and the condensate gas reservoir. So it can be gas condensate uh, reservoir and also it can be treated as wet gas reservoir. Also, we can note that the GOR is increased after some point. Uh, so we can expect that this point is uh, the, the pressure declines, declined be, be below the dew point for this reservoir. Uh, for this example, we have the GOR versus also the time. The initial GOR is about, uh, is about uh, 90, 90,000, so it is very high. Also, the EBO oil is increasing with the time that uh, indicates, uh, indicates gas condensate reservoir. So it can also, uh, it can be gas condensate reservoir or wet gas uh, reservoir. Uh, for this example, the GOR starts from very, very low, to low number uh, and then increasing for very high number. Uh, so uh, we depend on the initial GOR value. So it can be uh, black oil and this trending of increasing the gas production, it can be from gas cooling uh, phenomena. So uh, we know about the, our uh, reservoir fluid types and we can now uh, classify, uh, classify the, our reservoir based on the composition and the production performance. So uh, at this point, uh, we want to know what is the importance for the reservoir fluid uh, identification. The first importance for the reservoir fluid identification is using the suitable method for uh, PVT modeling and uh, material balance simulation. For example, for black oil and dry gas, we can use the, uh, the black oil correlations uh, like Biggs and Brill and uh, these correlations for black oil. Uh, and this is this called black oil model. For volatile oil and with gas uh, reservoirs, uh, the separated gas is associated with some oil that's separated from this gas. So uh, we we use uh, we use uh, correlations for the RV, the RV of the yield that representing the amount of associated oil with the gas production, and this method is called the modified black oil model. For gas condensate and very volatile oil reservoirs, we use the equation of state or the compositional model. This is uh, an example uh, for using or for wrong, uh, wrong using of the conventional material plan for volatile oil reservoir. So the prediction, the prediction for this uh, reservoir, when we use the conventional material balance, it gave uh, give us a very high uh, GOR, but when we uh, use the modified black oil model or the volatile oil material balance, we uh, we achieved a good, a very good match for the actual performance, and also it matched the uh, separator gas oil reservoir. Also, the, uh, when we know the reservoir, our uh, reservoir fluid 
we can forecast or expect the future productivity uh, problems like for gas condensate uh, reservoir for gas condensate reservoir uh, in in some cases a condensate ring is formed around the well bore so this condensate uh, ring uh, is lowering the is, is lowering the, the productivity of the uh, gas well so uh, so we when we have gas condensate reservoir we can expect that we have uh, we will have some productivity problems in the wells that can be solved by using uh, the gas recycling and the other method for stimulation. Also, identification the reservoir fluid can uh, lead us into our economic feasibility studies for the reservoir fluid, such as that uh, we know that the crude oil is classified as light, medium, and heavy according to the EPI density. So when we have uh, an EPI uh, ranges from our 40 to 45, we can have, uh, we can expect that uh, our oil will have a very high price. But when we have the EPI above 45, so the 45 EPI oil is less than or less valuable than the oil uh, that having gravity uh, from 40 to 45 because the hydrocarbon chains becomes very short and this short uh, this short hydrocarbon chains uh, want to uh, want to lead to a high uh, amount of energy like uh, that generated using the oil having API uh, gravity 40 from to 45. So we ended our journey with the reservoir fluid classification and uh, uh, we will uh, go through the sampling the techniques for the reservoir fluids. The ob our objective into reservoir fluid sampling process is to have a representative sample for our reservoir because we will use this uh, small sample from our reservoir to simulate or to mimic the depletion, the depletion and the volumetric behavior for the reservoir fluid into our reservoir. Our techniques into sampling, uh, we have two broad categories for the sampling, bottom hole sampling and surface recombination sampling. Uh, this diagram uh, can lead us uh, into our sampling process. Uh, to use uh, uh, either the bottom hole sampling or surface sampling. For oil reservoir, for black oil uh, reservoir, when we know that the uh, reservoir pressure is above the bubble point, uh, we use the bottom hole sampling. When we have uh, the reservoir pressure at the bubble point or below the bubble point, we can use the surface recombination uh, sampling technique. For volatile oil, the volatile oil, uh, we use a surface recombination that is used also for all types of gas reservoirs. For bottom hole sampling, we have three techniques. We can use the formation tester if we have an open interval. This tool is lowered onto as an, uh, the wire line or electric line and uh, something like a needle. This needle in, uh, is inserted into the open hole interval and sucks some of our reservoir uh, fluid. And uh, when we know that uh, the, the, the fluids go, uh, going through our tool uh, is representing uh, the reservoir fluid, we can sample this fluid into some chambers uh, inserted into the, this tool. Also, uh, if we have a case the whole conditions, we can use the wireline sample catchers. The wireline sample catcher is a tool uh, that is lowered into a wireline uh, wire or a slick line. Uh, this tool is cut some of the fluids into the wheel board and return it uh, to the surface and we can check its validity on the surface. Uh, if we are doing uh, some will, uh, a will test into uh, in, uh, on the will, we can use the DST string 
to sample some of the reservoir fluid into some chambers that uh, that are built in into the test uh, the test stream. For the open all formation tester uh, called RFT for Halliburton uh, or NDT for Chambers Chamber uh, the first the first step uh, is to use uh, is to use the the resistivity the resistivity and to pressure. The resistivity when we are uh, when uh, when uh, the, the, the needle uh, of the NDT or the RFT is inserted into the open hole interval and uh, and starting bumping out uh, the fluids from the the, the reservoir. Uh, in the beginning, uh, the mud filtrate is being sucked from the open hole uh, interval, and then the reservoir pressure, the reservoir fluid begin to uh, go through the tube. So, in the mud invasion uh, fluid uh, stage, the resistivity is very low. But when the oil insert uh, or started to be uh, going through the, the, the tool, the resistivity becomes higher, and so we can begin the sampling, uh, the sampling uh, process. Also, uh, for the entity or RFT tools, we have the optical fluid analyzer. The optical fluid analyzer is you is using the optical properties for the uh, the various fluids. So, uh, when we start the pumping out fluids from the, the reservoir, so uh, it uses uh, the optical properties for water and oil and gas to un interpret it uh, as uh, a column indicating or interpretation for the fluid uh, being pumped from the reservoir. At the beginning, as, as we see from uh, at one, so it is a mud filter, so uh, it is labeled as blue. Then uh, the oil, the oil fraction increased until all the sampled, uh, the sampled fluids uh, are representing the reservoir fluid. So at this stage, we can start the sampling process. Uh, for NDT, uh, for steps for uh, sampling, uh, first we can choose the good uh, patients that have uh, high uh, high mobility that uh, can help us into our uh, sampling process. Then we can measure the pressure and the mobility. If we have uh, a valid pressure reading and a high mobility. That is typically higher than uh, 0.5. We can bump out and uh, analyze and uh, uh, analyze the the, uh, the the fluids that is that are being bumped through the MDT tool uh, using the resistivity uh, the resistivity reading and also the optical fluid analyzer. If we have a represented fluid uh, to our reservoir, we can start we can start uh, sampling the process, but uh, a caution uh, is needed that uh, we should avoid sampling below the saturation pressure, because if we sample the reservoir fluids below the saturation pressure, so uh, we will have a multi-phase flow into the tool. So the multi-phase the multi flow uh, will lead to uh, not representing uh, sample uh, for our uh, reservoir. Also, we can take more than one sample, uh, one as main sample that will be sent to the, the lab for experiments, and the other sample will be as a backup sample. Uh, the sampling time is depending on uh, the cleaning uh, and the amount of mud invasion into the reservoir and also the, the formation mobility. If the mobility is very high, so the sampling time will be very short. The other method is the surface recombination system. <coughs> the recombination system or the surface recombination is to collect gas sample 
فروم ذا جاز ذا جاز اوت اوف ذا جاز اوت اوف ذا سيبريتور اند اوسو كوليكت ان اويل سامبل فروم ذا سيبريتور ذن وي كومباين ذا سام اماونت اوف جاز تو سام اماونت اوف اويل اكوردنج تو ذا جي ذا برودكشن جي او ار But before this sampling occurs, we will uh, we should condition our will to have a representative uh, fluid sample. So the first step is to reduce the production flow rate by 30% or 50% of uh, its production rate. Uh, if the GR remains constant, we can take the sample. If the GR uh, is not constant, We can uh, we can reduce we can reduce the flow rate again uh, on some stage. If the GR stabilized, we can take the sample. If the GR is not stabilized, so we can again reduce the production flow rate and uh, and uh, and see if the GR is stabilized. We can reduce also the flow rate to minimize the drawdown from the reservoir. Finally, this sheet is, uh, is for uh, the combination uh, samples taken from a separator. Uh, the sep uh, 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 condensate, uh, three, uh, three condensate samples and the three gas samples. Uh, the, the, the sample were label, will be labeled for the temperature of sampling and also the pressure for the reservoir, for the separator. And the volume of sample and uh, the bottle number, sample number. Thank you. And uh, any questions? Okay, thank you, Anjil Muhammad. Please, if uh, anyone have uh, any question, don't hesitate to ask uh, in the question and answer.